we're looking at Sasha's waist assembly. On the bottom left and bottom right, we can see the hip balls. Those are 3 eighths of an inch. They're being held by the hip joints, single ball joints. On top is, the, is a ball that handles the back joint. This waist assembly has rig points with 1032 threads to receive 1032 rig screws so that when the puppet's on set, it can be rigged and held from different directions. It can be held from the waist left and right, it can be held from the waist front and rear, and it can be held from the waist center vertical from the bottom down there. So it gives more options to the animators on how to hold it. I start out with this piece of brass. I'm milling some flat spots on it so that it's easier to hold it in the vise. And these flat spots will make it easier to make 90 degree angles on the succeeding holes I need to drill. If I just try to hold that in there with no flat spots, well then the holes won't be lined up the right way. Just making the flat spots about the same width across, just eyeballing it. If one flat spot's bigger than the other, then that messes the center line up. Spotting and drilling for the various other parts that need to go in there. Putting this piece in our lathe, I discovered if I tried to put the part that had the four flat spots on it and hold it in the lathe, and the lathe has three fingers on its chucks to hold it, it loses center. You, you can't find center again. So I learned, drill these holes first on the lathe before taking it over to the mill. Okay, doing a rough test fit on these parts. Putting on the rig tube, putting on the hip rod, putting in the little pin that's going to handle the front and rear rig points, putting on the hip joints. So good so far. At this point I want to secure this left and right brass piece before I drill it for the back rod. I want to make sure this is all held together firmly. So heating it up with 3700 degree map gas, I had applied some flux. Because this is brass, it, it, the heat wants to just flow through the entire part. It takes longer to get the parts up to temperature. Applying this 1200 degree 56% silver braze, just making sure that's all connected. Dip it in some water. Take a look at that fire scale. Back on the mill, I'm going to drill the hole out here that's going to receive the pin, and the pin's going to receive the ball that handles the double ball joint that is the back of this puppet. Just being careful, taking my time. Spent a little bit of time on the stone wheel and wire brush, cleaned up some of that fire scale, applying some flux, put a groove in that pin to vent the water escaping from that flux paste, heating it up with 3700 degrees. The little sparks are little bits of uh, sanding, a little sand dust, goes kind of like a sparkler. Again, this is a lot of brass, so that brass is going to absorb a lot of heat before it allows the solder braze to melt at 1200 degrees. It doesn't glow like that in real life, but it looks nice on camera. Okay, we're going, I cut that pin off until it's the right length, applying some flux, adding the the, the ball for the back joint. I was going to say backbone, back hip bones connected to the backbone. 
putting in a couple little bits of silver solder. These balls with the little hole in them uh, really make it easy to, to do this brazing operation. If there's no hole, then it's harder to vent the flux gases. If the hole goes all the way through, well then there's nothing to hold the ball in place. But with that hole that's about medium size, it just makes this so much easier to, to attach this ball and this pin. This operation, the heat's going to go down that pin, the heat's, and the, the brass is going to absorb the heat. So once again, I have to apply a lot of heat to get the ball out of the pin, and then at the same time, it's going to, it remelts that previous braze. But when it cools, it will all be solid again. On this puppet, I decided to extend the rig points out to the surface of the puppet rather than leaving them towards the center of the puppet. It's harder for me to extend these rig points out further, but I think the strength of the, I feel more confident in the strength of the brass holding the weight of the puppet up rather than having a longer piece of 1032 stock that may bend under the load as it tries to hold up the one kilogram or 2.2 pound finished Sasha puppet. So I think it's better for the animator to have these rig points closer to the surface of the skin. And it's not that much harder to make them longer than it is shorter. I got just a tiny speck of solder on the surface of the ball. The ball surface is a bearing surface, meaning it rubs against the, the joint top and bottom plates. So any depressions in that sphere are fine, but any bumps on that sphere will cause the, the joint to, to get stuck, to not move right. Here I am applying some, so, so I already took a file and some sandpaper and the, the stone wheel and cutoff wheel and Dremel tool and just tried to carefully get a teeny tiny little bit of solder off of that round surface. The last step is here I've applied some lapping compound, some valve grinding compound, and I'm using the joint that will be the, the actual joint that goes on this ball and uh, just spending a little bit of time working in that lapping compound, not a lot of pressure on it, just trying to take off the last little bits of the unnecessary solder that's on the surface of that ball. I don't want to work this too long. It will get out of round. It will become like football shaped, American football shape, um, oval shaped, ovoid. Uh, and then, yeah, this, this hip's not going to move right at all. So just spending a little bit of time cleaning that up a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. 